Hi everybody, my name is Edgardo Cambon. I'm from Montevideo, Uruguay. A big shout out to my Cotarraños compatriotas. Uh, I'm here at Dance Papi one more time doing this ninth video and today this chapter is going to be about the bongo or bongo if you say it in the English accent. The bongo, it's a great instrument, it's a fun instrument, it gives a, a chance to the player to improvise a lot and it's one of the few percussionists in, uh, well, the only one in Afro-Cuban percussion that incorporates two drums into one bongo and this is one set, this is one bongo as opposed to the tumbadoras which is a single instrument that you need to play two of them to get different tonalities um, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to tell you about this instrument is that some of these instruments are made out of wood uh, some other ones are made out of fiberglass some of them are carved out of one piece of trunk and um, Originally, this instrument had the skins tacked with nails around it and then this system of tuning got incorporated uh, much later in the instrument. Today, in front of me, I have a, a beautiful bongo 1974 LP bongo made in Palisades. I don't know if I say the right pronunciation with that, or Palisades, New York, and uh, or New Jersey maybe. I don't know, I've never been there, but... Um, this is one of my collector items, bongo, and uh, it's made out of stabs of wood, like a barrel shape, and uh, the dimensions on this is 7 inches and 8 and a half. Some bongos are a little larger on the hembra or low drum. This is called the hembra or female, and this is the macho or high drum. Uh, on, this, on this instrument I have right now plastic heads, which is kind of like a contemporary way of playing this instrument if you play with very loud bands and uh, these are Remo heads this is a new skin 7 inch and this is a fiber 3 skin so you know about my gear because a lot of people ask me what am I playing and what kind of skins I have etc originally the best skins out of the island of Cuba were <clears throat> either mule or cowhide or kip and different thickness for the macho and for the embra Cubans were arguably the first ones to put plastic heads on the macho or high drum of the bongo by way of using um, the film of x-rays and I got the, had the pleasure of seeing some people playing with that where you look at this and it's like a black thing you know with a with a finger in there where you can see through uh, what kind of x-ray that was and they would get a very high pitch on that and also obviously the plastic will withstand the temperature which it affects the temperature and humidity affect most uh, cowhide or hide instruments um, I'm going to start by telling you the origin of this instrument it's a little controversial of course in Middle Eastern countries there were instruments like that made out of clay and uh, with you know hide skins some of them filled at the bottom rather than being hollow at the bottom and uh, with the skin tied up around it. Um, in Cuba, there is also controversy about the origin of this instrument. Some people say that the instrument came from the Congo, and some other people think that this instrument came from the Awakwa people that have similar instruments but detached that they hold in their tradition in their shoulders. So some people think that the one theory is that those instruments got tied together and gave origin to this instrument. Furthermore, there is a term called bonco in the Abaqua tradition, and that uh, is your buddy, is, is your friend, sometimes referred as a good looking man, the mi bonco, and they kind of extend from bonco to bongo, and there is that uh, uh, controversy about the origin of this instrument. But this instrument was king, and it is still king, in two main styles in the island of Cuba. One is the changui. <coughs> which is an older style using an overly dimension uh, bongo and the other one is the son, the Cuban son, traditional Cuban son uh, where initially there was no tumbadora or this drum and the whole rhythm session was held by the bongo, the claves and the maracas so um, I want to proceed now to move forward with how to play this instrument this is an introduction first class on bongo so the first thing I'm going to tell you is that I like to sit a little lower than a regular chair for conga because I like to have my legs 
with a possibility of bending my legs without being higher. If I would be higher, I won't be able to do this angle, right? So I want to have this triangle here. And me, personally, I put one leg in front of the other one a little bit. And I will show you reasons for that. Then I'm going to place the bongo resting on my calves. This part of my leg, right here. And I'm going to slightly angle it a little bit. Now I'm going to show you a trick of bongo players. You'll notice that these lugs are not placed centered in the circle of the drum. I have purposely turned these around a little bit so the tuning lug doesn't end up in my calf. So I'm resting on the side of the drum and this tuning lug is going in between right here on my, on my knee, right underneath my knee. So by rotating that, I'm avoiding having something that is poking in my calves. That's personal, but it allows me to press it a little bit more. This instrument is going to want to escape. One of the problems with holding the bongo by for the beginners, they usually say, after playing it a while, my legs are shaking and I feel that the, the instrument is going to escape. If you see professional bongo players there, constantly kind of adjusting it a little bit and bringing it back to, to position, or at least definitely in between songs. So this is the position of the bongo. What I don't want to have is the bongo too deep down because my legs are going to get on the way. I want to be a little bit forward like that, sidewise. So I'm going to show you now the sounds on the bongo. Um, these sounds are not to be confused with the conga drum sounds that I explained to you in a video before. So I'm going to give you some sounds that the high drum gives. The first is going to be what is the relevant to a close sound or a slap, the high note on the bongo. And that high note is going to be created by putting my thumb on the left hand, if you are right-handed, on the center of the drum and very relaxed with my right hand about half, yeah, a little bit of this middle finger, one phalange or phalange, you would say, I guess, in English, inside. I'm going to put, I'm going to put my, my, basically I'm hitting them roughly with these three fingers, but just the tips. Hmm? Of course, the middle finger and the index and the ring finger are the ones that are hit, hitting the most in my technique. This is sort of personal, but it needs to be an edgy sound. So that's going to be my high pitch sound that I'm going to play that sound on beats one and beats three of my basic martillo or hammer bongo pattern, which is the first pattern you're going to learn in this instrument. So I'm going to repeat that, that sound, and show you that a good way to get the feel of this thumb is by you sliding the thumb down and hearing how that affects the pitch. Listen. So there's going to be a sweet spot in my hands, in my finger, in my position on this bongo. It's somewhere in here. I have my thumb and I'm resting with all these sideways. That's a very important sound, but it's going to make a differentiation with the next sound that I'm going to show you, which is the open sound of this. On terms of the position of my right hand, I'm not changing anything. I'm just going like this for the first sound and like this for the second sound. What makes a difference is the thumb on the drum. So that's the first thing I'm going to ask you to do. High, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. Now I'm going to ask you to have actually a little bit more action on this thumb sound and I'm going to show you another sound which is kind of like the ref relevant to a touch and a conga but with the thumb. So it's going to be, this is going to precede beat one and beat three. So this is going to be and, and one, and three, and one, and three, and one, and three, and one, and three. So let's move on with the sounds. There is another sound which is a front touch with the left hand. And in that sound, I'm just touching it with the front like this, light, it's a front touch, 
and that sound is going to be in the in-betweens so we're getting close to me being able to share with you this thumb one front two thumb three front four and for right now i'm still having you to do four on one bar count still on the high drum then later i'm going to ask you to put that four on the low drum and i'm going to show you how to hit it mm? but for right now i want you to get the feel the rocking feel of the left hand so here we go if i start on one one and two and three and four very slow thumb one front two thumb three front four mm? at speed Now, I'm going to give you the sound on four that the right hand is going to do. It's going to be, rather than a single finger or close to the edge, it's going to be a full tone. It's almost like an open on a conga, full open tone, right? But I'm kind of not letting it out. I'm not letting it ring. I'm kind of staying there for a sec to get that nice round sound. So I'm going to go... Now I'm continue on a 4-4 four, four metric giving you the basic martillo sound. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three. I have been saying and one and one and starting with my thumb but if you're gonna start in a band you're gonna try not to start with a pickup theoretically you're gonna start on one which is your thumb is already down so when you're in preparation to come in with the music your thumb needs to really be down there huh? common mistakes to go very light with your left hand especially when players try to speed this rhythm before they are ready so take it very very slow with a metronome because what you want to get is your differentiation between one and two, three, again, and four. Uh, otherwise, the bongo is going to sound linear. What do I mean by linear? When I don't press with my thumb, I get this kind of sound. So it sounds like I'm always going back, 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 boom, and it should be high. To this which is correct and now so I'm gonna speed it up for a second so you need to hear Paki toke, paki kumi, paki toke, paki kumi, paki toke, paki. That high and one and three is gonna make the hammer or the martillo hitting the same nail. Paki toke, paki kumi, paki toke, paki kumi, paki. So always, you need to pay a lot of attention to how you relax your thumb and how you press it against the drum. Some people go a little bit with a closer thumb technique. Some people go with a more open technique like that. So you can practice a lot of these. And one and three. And one and three. Very slow again. Full martillo pattern. One and two and one, two, three, go. One. Very good, moving on to a couple of more concepts. If you're playing in a song band, let's say you're accompanying a flamenco guitarist, 
you want to be a lot more lighter on your touch, this instrument can be played more with a finger technique, a lighter technique. So for instance, I can select my index and play a lot lighter. Now I'm already doing a little variation for you, right? Uh, I forgot to mention uh, a couple of sounds in this instrument and my apology, we're going to rewind, rewind the table and go back to a couple of more sounds. Uh, because those sounds are more relevant to when you start improvising in this instrument that with the basic martillo. But I should give you now the concept that in this instrument you can do a slap on the macho like you would do on a conga. And that sound is going to really come up. You can also do finger rolls uh, using your index and by using your index really at the level of the drum, not tippy, because you're not going to get it. You need to be very, very flat eh? and use your, your, your index like a, like a stick that you're almost hitting flat against the edge. You're going to go like this. Eh? That would be a sound that you could use for improvisation and the slap. The other sound that we have is an important sound, but again, it's going to take more place in the variations. It's a left hand accent. This left hand accent is not a slap because I'm not closing it with the other hand, neither I'm hitting a slap, although I could do that, but it's a sound that it gets, uh, it gets done by you uh, using your leg as a support spot and with the same amount of hand as you did on the initial sound on the right hand, now you're going to do this sound. It's got a different tonality. Notice that I'm bouncing my hand here, right? The bongoceros are going to do that when they're improvising and also when they're doing variations. For that, you're going to refer to the next video on that. What I want to talk to you right now before we close this chapter, because this is going to be a shorty, but a goodie. I want to talk to you about and telling you that this is a one bar phrase, one count of 4-4. Four, four. However, the bongo is one of the instruments that it would be the most in clave than any other instrument. It's great to understand that you can play a one bar pattern, but when you start playing variations, the patterns are going to be in relationship to the clave. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now with this is to... Uh, ask my assistant right here to bring up, I want to thank very much uh, an application and the creators of this application that I'm going to use it. Uh, go ahead and Google it and search it. The application is called Salsa Rhythm and it's an application that allows you to choose different montunos or piano phrases, uh, put bass, put congas, add and subtract instruments and increase the speed, etc. And it's, it's a great fun metronome for you to play uh, along with this music. Notice that in what is going to be accompanying me right now in a second, I took out the, cla the, the, excuse me, the campana, the bell, and I only uh, arranged for a tumbao pattern on the conga to be a single drum on the conga. Because theoretically, in a salsa band, when you're playing the bongo, and these are generic rules, uh, it's going to be in the rhythm section area where there's going to be only one conga and the bongo zero is going to take the role of picking up the bell in different sections of the tune. For that, refer to the Campana uh, video that we're going to be doing also, possibly today, a little later today. But right now, what I want to do is to play your basic martillo with an accompanying. Maestro Ariel. We hear that monsoon, right? We hear the cloud, I wanna play it. Very basic, right? One and two and one, two, three, go. Very nice and relaxed.
martillo. So please stay in tune for the next video, which is going to be on bongo variations. We're going to see some of these variations that we just did. And also we're going to do another video on campana or cowbell, which is the other instrument that the bongo solo is supposed to be playing in a band. Uh, so if you, let me tell you something about the campana, very important. I can go to a show and I may not have my bass player and, and I'm going to suffer. But if I don't have anybody to play campana, I can't make the people dance in my book. So a very important instrument, the cowbell, when you go to see a, a salsa band and you see the bongo cero picking up the bell, you're gonna feel that energy, the whole music lift off when the campana comes in. So stay in tune. Please visit my website at musiccandela.com. It's gonna be on the screen in any minute, musiccandela.com. Thank you for all your amazing support to the videos in Dance Puppy. Some of them have, you know, already getting overwhelming responses. And we we'll see you around the block with more salsa. Gracias.